Hi, this is Thomas Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And before we get started on our half marathon, marathon race day shoe pick, we're gonna say what, Robbie? Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video. And we're gonna do it's something gonna special this time, too. Yeah, very special. Yeah, you so it? yeah, we don't normally do a lot of giveaways or anything like that, but we thought with this video, because people love race day and we wanna help you have the best day possible, we're gonna pick from one of you that subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our email. Both are gonna have links in the description that Robbie will throw in there, right Robbie? Yeah, and I'll put a link in the first comment as well. If you're a subscriber on both, we're gonna pick somebody from that list and we're gonna use our own money and buy them our top pick race day shoe. So let's get into it, Robbie. This is a big one. This is like um, prom for shoe reviewers. Oh. It's like, yeah. You know, we have a car coming up. They're dropping off the shoes. We're gonna pin corsages on it. Yeah, I was I gonna know. say, did you bring one for me? I did. No? Uh, uh, right. What do you get? What's a uh, what's it? It's a Carnation? corsage. Corsage for the woman, <laughs> and then boutonniere. Boutonniere. That's it. But you guys are probably really excited to get started. So, Robbie, are we starting with the worst to best? Yeah, or best to worst. We so before in the like in the past, we've just kind of threw them all out there and said, here's the shoes that we like. People said that they wanted. Uh, worst to first, so let's do it that way. So Solomon, this is the first time that we tried out what I would call a road racing plated shoe. Now this one isn't carbon plated. It's so, got, and they don't even call it plate, what do they call it? Energy well, blade. Yeah, so this is the Solomon S Lab Phantasm Carbon CF, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're going to see with this is the upper didn't fit well, which was strange. And I got a weird size, like the size I think was supposed to be maybe for brand or something, but it fit my foot. It was like a really, it's not like two sizes off or something. Right? Yeah, but it fit. <laughs> yeah. So I wore this one and the cushioning, I like the direction their cushioning is going, but it's just not there yet. The shoe's not light enough. It doesn't have that bounce. It doesn't have that pop off the toe. It's a nice, road shoe but like i said the upper because they kind of skimmed it down for this isn't the greatest and i still feel like they're kind of working on these road shoes yeah solomon's fairly new to the road game or at least pursuing it on a you know more, more aggressive level yeah there's a lot of things that are going in the right direction it just didn't like okay. wow us and like you, you want to be when you get to race day you want to be like wow well that's that let's move on to the next one all right this one if you are a fan of our channel you are not going to be surprised it's a fun shoe to run in i wouldn't want to race in it though all right let's bring it out robbie you've burned one of these before i uh, there might have been some uh, an act of illusion in there <laughs> pyrotechnics <laughs> Oh, I did want to, we all wanted to burn the first version, first version of this shoe and it deserved to be burned. Yeah. It was awful. And uh, so this is a Brooks Hyperion Elite 3. It's really the Hyperion Elite 2 with a new upper. Pretty much. And this has a knit upper, which I don't, I, it was like, we weren't that into it. What it was is this is a nice running shoe. This yeah. is a really nice running shoe. It's not a race day shoe. I don't think it gets you that advantage that you get from some of the other speed shoes. It's a super critical foam, so you have that nice bounce that you get from those, but it's not the lightest. The plate, you can't really feel it in it. What you feel is more of that rocker feel from having a rigid bottom coming through. I like this shoe. If it was just like a daily trainer, I'd probably get rid of the plate. I don't know, Brooks, I feel like they just need to move on, get catch up, I should say. They, or either decide to do it or not do it. Like they don't, they're selling so many pairs of the Ghost daily trainers. Yeah. They don't need to worry about putting you in a super shoe. They're like, ah, go ahead, buy a Vapor Fly. For, yeah. for 250 bucks, it's like, it's hard for me to justify getting this over so many other options out there. Yeah, and does the color scream, let's go fast to you? It screams, let's go scuba diving or something. Scuba diving, yeah. All right, Robbie. Yes. It's funky looking, it's crazy. We were excited about it when it came out. First time we saw it was last December. Yeah, like 2021. But it finally made it onto our feet probably hasn't made it onto yours. Very limited release, not very widely available. Puma it, Fast R. Fast R. This one has an interesting feel with this super critical Ooh. foam up front and the plate. I mean, it has this carbon bridge plate in here, which is interesting and exposed, obviously. You can see above and below it. I was surprised at how much I really liked this shoe. I think I took it like eight miles out of the box, picked up the pace. 
and it, it, it felt awesome to me. I love the grip on it, it has Puma grip. It's a little bit on the heavier side, but I really liked it a lot. I liked it, but when I went to go do speed stuff, and when I was like doing some of my marathon training workouts in it, mm -hmm. I just couldn't get the feeling under my foot that I wanted to go fast. Again, this is one of those shoes that maybe came off like a hot second, and do, do we even know what's going on with this shoe? We don't. <laughs> All right. I've seen other colorways, but even their athletes seem to be sticking with the well, that's, DV8. That's Elite. the weird thing is, yeah, yeah Molly Seidel, uh, some other- I don't uh, even think I saw anybody at Boston this past April yeah. wearing this shoe of their athletes. So we don't know like if it actually is coming again this fall or early 2023, but I guess we'll see. But we thought we should put it on there since it was like out for a hot second, so. Yeah, I mean, and we ran in it, so yeah. that counts. All right, cool. <laughs> so let's move on, Robbie. All right. What do we have next? What we got next is a shoe that came out for a, what, very short time? Very brief amount of time. And then it may not see the light of day. This year might be early 2023. So, but we're gonna throw it in there since it's somewhat, some people got their hands on it. Yeah, I actually enjoy the feel of this shoe and we followed Jordan Trofe around while he ran in a previous version of this shoe. So this, what is this? This is the Under Armour and I, I forget, is it the Flow Velocity Elite? I think that's the full name, yeah. Did I get it? I think, <laughs> wow. I, honestly, I'm shocked. So Under Armour, not exactly known for their performance racing shoes. Or running shoes. Or, or just running <laughs> shoes, let's be real. I like the way this looks. It looks pretty cool. See, I'm not sure I like the lattice you know? basket weave. Okay. Like to me, these- Not a fan of long burger baskets. Yeah, it does. It's exactly. My mom had like 50 of them. What you have is a very light open upper. It's got two densities of foam. So you've got kind of this Piba style foam where it's got like kind of that styrofoam popcorn-y look. Mm -hmm. And then you come down to their flow rubber. So it's exposed on the bottom and it has a nice grip even though it doesn't look like it would because there's no rubber or anything like that. I would say that this compares very favorably to last year's Endorphin Pro, so the Endorphin Pro 2, <laughs> and I would say that, you know, it's not that far off from some other uh, super shoes that we've tried in the past. Do you put this on like the level two tier of racing shoes? Yeah. Maybe good tempo shoe? If I had to run a marathon in this, I, I could do it. Okay. And I think I'd feel pretty good about it. We're gonna I mean, find out, Brandon's gonna clearly do Clearly there have been people that, who have done it. Yeah. Like Jordan Trope. Yeah, like Jordan Trope. It's a nice start for Under Armour in the super shoe category. Yeah, it's good to see them finally like putting some investment back into yeah. it. Up next we have the Ultra uh, Vanish C or Vanish Carbon. They call it two different things, I don't know. I was surprised by this. So maybe the C stands for Confusion. Surprise with a C. <laughs> yeah. Surprise <laughs> with spelled with a C. But yeah, this shoe is actually fun to run in. I like the way that the Ego Pro feels. Again, this is more of a super critical foam. Yeah, I think it's like TPE based, so it's still on that, you know. It's mixed. It's all yeah, chemicals. yeah. This stuff. And it blows out. Areas where this shoe fell a little short were on the longevity for it. Forget how f high up I got, maybe 30, 40 miles in it. And I did start to feel a little compression in the foam as well as the foam based, uh, it's like rubberized foam on the outsole, really took a beating in this shoe and really like sawed off on the lateral right. edge and a little bit on the heel. So I have to say like, Durability wise, you're paying the premium price for race day. Very and then well. there's the whole question of, is this actually a zero drop shoe? Which I don't care, but if you're a real ultra person, you might. We talked about in other reviews, we just did our Vanish review. I think if you measure here and here, it's zero drop, but it's more, it feels more rockered. It's got a toe spring in it. Interesting thing about the plate on this one, it's broken up into like three parts in it. So it doesn't feel as harsh underfoot. Mm -hmm. The ride is nice. Okay. So All yeah, right. let's start getting into the, we're getting into the people with a high batting average. All right, and before we get into that actually, we also wanna say another thing coming at the end, there's a lot of surprises coming. Surprise. Is that we have some news about some shoes that could have maybe been on here, but might miss the mark. We have some release date news, so stick around for that. All right, Thomas, let's get into the thick of things. All right, what, are, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking we go Nike. Oh, Nike. how the mighty have Ooh, fallen. This usually would have been an end of video. Oh, this guy, the Alpha Fly One, still, if, if Alpha Fly One came out this year, would be number one. Climbing the ladder. Alpha Fly Two, they took this shoe and they 
took it like Tommy Boy with his chicken wings and just <laughs> destroyed it. Oh, oh, I killed it! Everything about the one was everything that you loved in a shoe. Uh, could handle the marathon distance with ease. Once you got moving and cruising, you just held that pace. It was a set it, forget it race day shoe. You got to the pace that you wanted and you got into a rhythm and the shoe just helped you stay in that rhythm. And if you could manage that, you could just hang in there. And I feel like this shoe still does that in a way. And I do think there are some improvements on it. Like the upper just fits great. Upper is great. Um, they made, there's a little bit more cushion in the heel here. And I think they have a little bit more padding of the lace. It's not that much more padding, okay. but the upper is really nice. The Adam knit is extremely breathable. Feels good on the foot. Everything's good. You have the Zoom X that we've come to love. You got a different configuration of rubber up here that seems to work and you're probably like right now, why <laughs> don't you love this shoe like the other one? They made it for the people. They did. But they, too many people. They stabilized the shoe. So the original one, if you're walking around, it was like a little weird. You could wear these casually. That's how stable they are. <laughs> so this one though, wider platform, it gained weight. But the one thing that is missing is that pop under the toes. So when you're coming down and you're coming off this, that spring from the air zoom units just is missing. Well, and here's the, the elephant in the room is that the drop now is eight millimeters, used to be four millimeters. So this is already maxed out in the heels. That can only mean one thing. They're taking a little bit of cushioning out four foot. And I think that comes through. It's just like you said, you don't feel that same exact pop. That yeah, it's before. missing it. And, and, and it, the weight is up there with some daily trainers, like, lighter daily trainers. Yeah, that both Megan and I just weren't in love with it. We have talked to some other heavier runners that maybe are compressing this a little bit more and they seem to like it. But yeah, for us, the magic was gone. They stripped it out of this shoe. So we have three shoes left and th there's a little bit of a, uh, it could go either way on these three. I think you could juggle them and whichever one you caught in your hand, that would be the one that you'd say was yeah. your, your best. They're all really close. So we got the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 3, so many Adi words in there. <laughs> and I gotta say, I feel like the way that Nike kind of went backwards in some things with the Alpha Fly. These guys moved it forward. Yeah, in the Audios Pro, it's like everything we want to see corrected from the last version they did in this version. I think this weighs the exact same as last year's version. Uh, the upper, very breathable. The upper's a little weird. That was like the only problem we had with yeah. the shoe. As the, if you could take this upper and put it on this shoe, I think we're going somewhere. It feels bouncy, it feels fun. It's similar to this where if you get into a pace, it really holds it and yeah. I just, what about that um, grip? And the, the grip is insane. Like the continental rubber outsole, you can hold on to anything. It looks smooth, but it's probably like a rock climbing like style rubber where it just grips. Mm. For me, this might be top two, maybe on certain days. It's so tough. One. There's right now we're splitting hairs. Like it's really getting down yeah. to the nitty gritty. Uh, this runs, I will say this does run a little bit long. That was the only kind of issue I had with it, so. Does it run long or is that just like that Adidas thing where it's really pointy at the tip like that a might, cowboy boot? Yeah, that might be it. Asics, last year, put out a great new shoe, the Metaspeed Sky and Edge. This year, we've got the updates, which it should have been twos. There's enough changes in this shoe that it could have been twos, but for some reason they went with plus rather than two. So yep. you got the Metaspeed Sky plus, yeah, so for some reason, the operator or the plus minus signs are not on the shoe, which makes it very confusing. It does make it, I mean, and I, I have been not once, but twice said, maybe three times, <laughs> Meta Speed Sky Edge. Three times a Because, you know, I'm like just rolling it together. Anyway, let's talk about what's changed in this shoe. So we've got more foam in the sky. The plate is closer to your foot than it is in the edge. The shape of the plate is less spoon-like and it sits close to the foot so you get that cushioning when you land and this is going to be closer to say your you know bouncy softer softer uh you know marathon shoe yeah whereas i felt with the metaspeed edge plus this time feels a lot like last year's uh, sky to me where it has like a spoon type of plate pretty aggressive toe spring um, feels a little bit firmer megan really likes the sky plus 
Robbie and I lean towards the Edge Plus. I think what we liked in it is what Robbie's talking about, that toe spring. I feel like you can feel the plate load when you come down towards the front of your foot and are coming off your stride. Yeah. It has a little more of an aggressive feel. I don't know, maybe if I'm going marathon, I would go with the Sky Plus just because of that extra feeling of cushion. Although with the plate further away from your foot in the edge, I don't know why that would not make it feel a little more cushioned. By the way, if you need a full explanation of all the technology and everything, we have another video up that we'll throw a card up so you can check that out. It's gonna work for a lot of people. To me, this is the closest thing to a Vaporfly. And you're like, well, why isn't the Vaporfly on this list? Well, they didn't come out with a new model this year. There's no Vaporfly. 2022. Next percent yeah. three. This is a shocker, people. Mm. Shocker. Because I wouldn't have even put their Endorphin Pro. This is, by the way, there's a Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. I wouldn't have even put the toe in the top tiers. That would have been on the second tier. They did a nice job. Yeah, I mean, this is a complete overhaul of the second version, which the first two versions were pretty much the same. Yeah. And I mean, let's start with the mermaid upper. Merman, mermaid. The upper in this one, I can take it or leave it. It's got shininess to it, so it's got some flash. But where the magic really is in this shoe is this midsole. It's just the perfect amount of soft and light mm -hmm. cushioning that you want out of the shoe. Uh, you have this uh, Piba Power Run PB midsole, huge stack of it. Uh, I think it's. I think it's actually a millimeter more than last year's version, but it it's definitely a lot softer, softer. Than what you say. The shoe feels softer. Where I like the toe spring, like I said, in the Metaspeed Sky Edge Plus. See, I did it, Metaspeed Sky Edge Plus. And then Metaspeed Edge Plus, where I like that toe spring coming off. This one just has a little more softness underneath that ball of your foot, and just you just feel it coming through. There's just a little bit more of a balance. As a matter of fact, if I had to pick any of these shoes for my marathon, that we have in this rundown right now, this it would be hard not to choose this one. I love the design of it. The tongue's great. It has like these three Sockneys holes in it, kind of throwback to their logo. It's all together, just like really, I mean, the design's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And all the uppers on Saucony this year have been really dialed in well. Mm -hmm. And this shoe is no exception. It's lightweight, it's breathable. There's like nothing to it, but it does the job. By the way, $225, it undercuts, I think, every single one of the shoes on this table. Does it really? Yeah. There are a couple other shoes. But this is the shoe. That's that the shoe, that's the shoe. This is it. If, and, if, and if you're applying for our contest where you subscribe to both the email yes, and sure you our YouTube that. channel, this is the shoe that we will try to get onto your feet. There's a couple other shoes that I thought should maybe be on here. Thomas was like, ah, not really. I'm like, no. If, if we're talking strictly that they could cover the half marathon and the marathon distance, I feel like these shoes don't make the cut, even though a few years ago, they had enough stack and enough cushion that they would have been great choices for the marathon. And that's kind of where my argument lies, where we can, they can still, because it's just a couple years, like they could fit into that argument. And I think they, are better than some of the shoes on this list. I mean, we might as well just bring it out. Takumi Sen, which again, another reason I'm disqualifying the Takumi Sen. When did it come out, Robbie? I think it came out technically like the last week of last year or something. <laughs> the last week of last year. It was the last couple months. It was like November, December. No, no, it was def. We didn't publish our review till like December 14th. It wasn't out yet. It has all the great things that at the time we didn't see the uh, new version of the uh, Pro coming out. And we're like, this feels better than the Pro 2. Yeah, this felt better than pretty much, I mean, we were wowed by this shoe. We love this shoe. Yeah. And I still love this shoe. Sometimes I just want to take this out, but we have so many damn shoes to review that I can't get into it and it drives me crazy. Um, but I love it. it. I think it's very similar to the Pro 3, just like a but it's lower lighter. stack, lighter. It's lighter. It I mean, doesn't have a carbon plate either. It has what is True. this fiberglass or yes yeah, it's, it's like they're yeah fiberglass rods i feel like you could definitely use this for a marathon shoe if i think if you, you could want something i definitely around. think also someone who's your size and a lighter runner could get a ton of benefit out of running in this over this shoe just for weight if robbie's going to include this one so go we have to include maybe the best nike that's come out this year street fly which I, I, so I never got to try the Streak Fly, so I'm gonna have to trust your judgment on this. 
It's light. It's air. I mean, feel that in your hand. Feel this in your hand. They're both size yeah. ten and a half. The what's interesting about this one? It doesn't have a plate. It's got a, sh a midfoot shank. So like right around here, it's got like a, like a yeah. Chain. yeah, pretty much. Cool. But again, this shoe had enough cushion that a couple of years ago, like when I was running in uh, the Zoom Fly and the Streak, uh, you know, they, yeah, they not the LT, but the oh, regular Streak, okay. it had enough, it has about the same. And I ran marathons in those and this feels better underfoot. Yeah. So for me, this upper is just sick. It's just a perfect upper almost. It's very light, very breathable, fits great. The cushioning on this feels soft when you're going slow and then firms up as you pick up the pace. It's a really nice shoe. Yeah, so would you feel comfortable taking this to half, half marathon? Yep. Okay, all right. I mean, like go. I said, a few years back, this would have been enough for a marathon. Yeah. Here's one, again, 5K, 10K shoe that's plated from New Balance. This is the Pacer. What you're gonna see in here is a carbon plate, fuel cell, a cushioning on the bottom, very low stack at, again, probably around 30 something, you know? Yeah, it's like the actual, it might be 27, but like you said, it's more closely resembles a traditional racing flat, I would say, except carbon plate thrown in there. Yeah. Um, like there's no way I'd run a marathon in this one though. No. Uh, very light upper, very breathable, not much to it. You could probably run a half if you're a uh, efficient runner. Mm -hmm. This would probably work for that. I mean, this has a little more soft, little more bounce. Okay. This has a little firmer, but really aggressive feel. And great outsole again. Yeah, that outsole is insane. I, I want to throw this in there just as more of a budget racer. Cause like some alternative. Because some people don't want to drop $250 on a, a, a shoe. And this, it does have a play. So this is Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. I think this is a shoe that really can do it all from daily trainer to tempo. This is a great beginner shoe. Like if you're going to buy you know, maybe you're gonna rotate between two shoes, a daily trainer and something that you can go a little faster in and race in. Yeah. I think there's a great shoe for that. And so, yeah, exactly. If you want something, you don't want, you can't drop 250 bucks on a race day shoe. I think, especially your first marathon, like you said, this will get you there. It has great stacks, lightweight, has nice roll through the stride. That PB, just, Power Run PB is a yeah. great foam. It's just a good shoe, so. All right, so the last one we're gonna give you might be for a specific marathoner and style. I would kind of put this into two categories. Maybe a heavier Clydesdale runner or a runner that's gonna be out there for more than four hours. Like okay. if you're not trying to go liquid fast and trying to be like- Dude, that might in, be me. In like, the front. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give the New Balance SC Trainer a nod. You've got a plate, you've got great fuel cell um, foam underfoot, you've got the one of the best uppers that I've worn this year. I really love this upper. And it's a comfortable shoe. The cushioning is insane. And why I would say this one is it's just so comfortable and it's such a cruiser that if you were gonna go maybe a little bit slower and you're gonna be on your feet a little bit longer, this shoe is gonna be easy on your legs. You're gonna feel better the next day. And it just has a nice cushioning for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, I th and I think that's a shoe you can kind of use for your whole marathon training cycle if say, because some people just have one shoe they want to buy for everything. Mm -hmm. The plate still gives you some energy return. The foam gives you some energy return. One of the reasons I wouldn't use it for race day personally is it's on the heavier side. Yeah, for sure. But again, if it's your first time, you're just going to be out there for a while. You just want to get it done. Yeah. One more thing. We have a little bit of news. You want to own some other shoes that are coming? You might have noticed there wasn't one New Balance race day shoe in our list. Like and that's marathon me, shoe, yeah. I guess. This yeah. year, they're just kind of passing right by. Uh -huh. And yeah, you might see us running New York in the SC Elite V3, yeah. but you're not gonna be buying it. Yeah, so that's gonna be, it might be like a super limited release around New York. I don't Yeah, there might now. be, I think that they're gonna have a special edition New York. Yeah one that you might be able to purchase. Also, On has a new super shoe coming, which uh, looks pretty sweet. I've seen photos of it. And <laughs> Robbie used to hate On, now he's like becoming well, the now I'm on like, Well, now I'm intrigued because it's like suddenly they're starting to make shoes that are pretty good running shoes, yeah. so. And we're gonna see a oh. lo lot more of the high stack, uh, what we call illegal trainers. So you're gonna see that Hyperion What'd you call Hyperion it? Hyperion Max. Hyperion Max. We're going to see Super Blast coming out from ASICS. This one is above the limit at 40, what is it? 47. 47. And then, of course, the Prime X 
is also over. So we also have seen photos of the Hoka Rocket X2, I believe it is. And that looks big stack, big cushion. It looks like a totally different midsole than past Hoka racing shoes, which is good because the past Hoka racing shoes are pretty bad. So again, remember to subscribe to our email list, enter into that contest. So we'd love to get you a pair of Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s because it's such a good shoe. Out of our own pocket. Yeah, this isn't a Saucony thing. We, no. I don't think we've ever done anything with Saucony. So mm. you, you're welcome to Saucony. Yeah, good kudos to you. Um, Anything else? I think, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and if you want to get Bomba socks, you can always use the BITR20 code. We, yeah, they didn't even pay for this video, but we're no, giving it to them anyway. We'll throw it out there because we want you to have good socks to go with your super shoes. <laughs> exactly. All right, so make sure that you listen to our podcast, The Drop. We've also got Fuel for the Soul with Megan Featherston, where we talk about nutrition for athletes, which is very important if you're running marathons or longer distances. And we have a phenomenal Instagram account. Uh, I'd like to think so. As long as Instagram was at throttle us, some people will find yeah. enjoyment in it. Who knows how that works. And anything else? Yeah, just follow us and we're on everything. Strava, whatever. Ooh, Strava. Um, we're not on TikTok. Well, we are on TikTok, but we're not. But we never, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> All right, anything else? That's it. All right. Hey, let's, good, let's luck on, good luck at your race. We hope you have a great fall racing season. Yeah. And uh, if anything pops into our office that we want to show you, Ahead of time, we'll we'll add it in. If there's something that you feel like we missed on this list that was released in 2022, you let us know. Uh, by the way, it, let it drop in the comments whatever marathon you're running. We want to find out. What and what shoe running. you're gonna run it in? Yeah, there we go. And that doesn't have to be 2022. Should, you can just you can be like <laughs> any year ever. We should have said that in the beginning. That would've been cool. Well, we yeah. can go back in time. <laughs> All right, let's finish this. All right, peace. You know when it's like there and you can't get can't it get it out. <coughs> All right. All right. Is that recording? How are you doing? White weights and stuff. Lifting weights, despite the fact that the numerator is it the numerator or is that numerator is like the top That's number? That's fractions. Yeah. Yeah. Numerator, numerator and denominator. What's the what do you call it? just like a plus or a minus sign? What's the technical term? Operator. Operator. It's an operator, right? Hello, operator. Brandon, does he know what that means?